Hey guys. Um, let's turn back the clock, okay? Let's go back in time to the 1980s. And, um, what, let me ask you, what was your deciding factor on going to the theater to see a movie? Was it who was in the film, the story, you know, what it was about, who directed it, who wrote it, and the music, um, you know, why did you go to see a certain film? I mean, what was it? Like, hey, I want to see that. Or I don't want to see that. Um, could be a combination of any of those. Right? So, um, <clears throat> so this video is pretty much going to touch on 15 movies from the 1980s that were box office bombs but were actually really great films so you know i think uh especially back then and maybe in the 90s and early 2000s uh people probably listened to film critics you know, they would either uh, read in the newspaper or watch the show, because I know Siskel and Ebert had a show, and, uh, you know, reviewing the movies that were coming out this week, because they had, a, like, you know, a weekly show, I believe. Um, and I think people listened to them. <laughs> kind of were... Uh, made their deciding factor from listening to a film critic. Which, to me, a film critic is just giving their opinion on a certain film. So, I didn't really, and still don't, listen to film critics about whether I'm going to see a movie or not. I, uh, I will listen to family and close friends who know me, who know me well and know what type of films that I, I like. I would rather listen to them than someone I, a stranger, and a film critic. You know, Siskel and Ebert, probably the two most famous uh, film critics out there. Of course, they're both gone now, but I actually did enjoy, and you can watch older shows of theirs on YouTube, and I like them because uh, even today, just go back and seeing what kind of uh, opinions that they had on certain films, older films. And, uh, what, it's what, they're like night and day. One would like a movie, and the other wouldn't like that movie, and they would kind of go back and forth and argue. It, it was kind of hilarious, you know? Um, sometimes they uh, agreed on the same film, and sometimes they didn't. But it was just, it was entertaining to watch them kind of bicker. You know, they're like, they're a married couple. Uh... <clears throat> I'm going to get interrupted by a cat here. Um, but anyway, there's, so, the 15 movies, some of them I have seen, I own a few of them, and some of them I haven't seen. So, um, with this one, I have some numbers, uh, and, um, Can, can I get you down? Can I get you down? Before you knock my thing over. Punk. Okay, whatever. Better not interrupt me. <laughs> hey, yo. <laughs> Kitty key. Anyway. So, let me see. Uh, One of them has got such a long title. I don't know. There's some movies that if they have long titles, it's just like they don't do well in the box office. I know on some of these, they have reasons why they didn't do well. And some of them, I just don't know why. It's just, they just didn't. And there are actually quite a few of them, a number of them that, you know, they made a profit. But I guess, you know, the studio expected it to be a bigger hit than it was. So, can't please everybody, y'all. 
<laughs> you know. So number fifteen is a, a a movie that you know my if you like uh, fantasy action adventure and fantasy, it's definitely a film for you. It came out in nineteen eighty one and it's called Dragon Slayer, and it's about a young wizarding apprentice that who is sent to kill a dragon which has been devouring girls from a nearby kingdom. Wow, devouring girls. The only person I know in this film is Peter McNichol, and if you don't know who he is, he uh, was in uh, Alec McBeal with the special toilet in the bathroom, and um, was in Ghostbusters 2. He's been in other films, but he's usually the comic relief, so mainly. Um, so that's pretty much who he is. But see, Dragon Slayer's budget, it was made for $18 million and it only grossed $14 million in the box office. So, it's not like it did terribly well, I mean, terribly bad. It's still, you know, it missed it by $4 million, but still, I guess back in 81, it took forever to get to, you know, make up that $4 million probably because the ticket prices were way cheaper than it is now. I mean, way cheaper. I would like to actually go back to those ticket prices back then. Uh, I can spend all day and, and probably see four movies for, like, less than 20 bucks. You can see, like, one movie now for 20 Like, just a ticket. And then you have some change left over, but still, ticket prices is just, whoa. Um, so... Uh, that's Dragon Slayer. 14, uh, 1988 film starring Christian Slater, Shannon Doherty, Winona Ryder, and it is called Heathers. The budget was, actually this is a very small budget film, but it still didn't make that much money. It, uh, was all, made for three million, and it only made a third of it. So it made one million. <laughs> um... So, yeah, Heathers, it, with that one, um, I didn't see Dragon Slayer, but I have seen Heathers, and I'm sure the reason why it didn't do too well at the box office is because the shaking is due to cats. I'm sorry. Yay, they're ball. Okay. Bye-bye. I thought they are about to jump up on my face for a moment. Um, So, uh, on IMDb, give you a little plot here. Um... It's the, the subject matter is probably why Heathers didn't do very well at the box office. Um, because there's... It's, let's see here. At a Westerberg High, at Westerberg High where cliques rule, jocks dominate, and all the popular girls are named Heather, is going to take a Veronica, a mysterious new kid to give teen angst a body count. I think it has to do with uh, suicide, so it's, it's as I said, it's kind of, it's, it's subject matter. And most likely turn people away from seeing others. Um, <clears throat> it's what I would think. In 1986, uh, or, yeah, 1986, uh, Sean Connery and Chris Lambert started a movie called Highlander. And, um, it's also spawned a, a TV show that I think lasted several seasons. I didn't see the movie. Wait, I don't think I saw the movie. I know I didn't watch the show. Uh, but it's about an immortal Scottish swordsman must confront the last, the last of his immortal opponent, a murderously brutal barbarian who lusts for the fabled prize rise with the quotes his budget was uh 19 million and it grossed 13 million so you know as i said sometimes these movies they come close to what you know the budget but it still didn't i guess you know close is not close enough but still it was still shy six million so uh <laughs> this is the next one y'all i don't know a thing about it I just know it's got a really funny name, and, uh, 
let me type this in if you don't mind here. Because, uh, let's see here. Here we go. Came out in 1984. And it's got a uh, cast of Peter Weller, John Lithgow, uh, Ellen Barkin, let's see, Jeff Goldblum, Christopher Lloyd. Pretty much, yeah, some other people you would definitely, Clancy Brown. So, um, other people as well. So, it's got a great cast, and that's probably, could be reason why I didn't, I don't know why I didn't do very well. Uh, but... So, in, in 1984, it's The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai, or Banzai, Across the Eighth Dimension. Long title. And y'all, and, and that's, as I think that's the curse, though, with long title. See, this movie, it was made for $17 million, and it only grossed $6 million. So, and I think there are other long titled films that didn't do well. So I don't know why a long titled film won't do good in, at the box office, but that is one of them. <laughs> okay, now this one, I do kind of have a, a reason why this one didn't do too well. But as I said, these movies are said to be good. So some of these I am going to see that I haven't. Because, you know, kind of doing a little bit, well, not really too much research, but doing this, these movies, these videos, I kind of get inspired or say, hey, interested in seeing some film films that I haven't seen before. So, um, in 1985, uh, <clears throat> whoops. A boy obsessed with the 1950s sci-fi movies about aliens has reoccurring dream about a blueprint of some kind which he draws for his adventure friend. With the help of a third kid, they follow it and build themselves a spaceship. That would be uh, The Explorers with Ethan Hawke and River Phoenix. Now, the reason why this one didn't uh, do extremely well is because it was released a week after Back to the Future. So, Back to the Future was out for one week. This movie came out. So, it was almost a kiss of death, almost. Plus, it also, I believe, came out the weekend uh, as uh, Live Aid was going on, was being aired on TV. So... You got that, you got Back to the Future, maybe some other stuff that may be going on in the world can also influence why certain movies do certain, you know, perform certain ways in at the box office. So, but The Explorers, uh, you know, it made, it, it was, the budget was 20 million and it grows 10. So... But the movie's good. I actually I have seen that one. It is very good. It's a good kids movie. So if you got kids, uh, you know. Hey, you know it's that's a good film for for kids. The kitty film. It seems like some a lot of these films that didn't do too well are like fantasy type movies, action adventure fantasy, and um, I I think I've seen this one. I'm pretty sure I have seen this one. Sometimes when I'm not 100% sure, I have to go back and kind of rewatch it, see if I can find it, then rewatch it. And then be like, oh yeah. In 1983, um, the only one I really know who's in this film is Liam Neeson, but he's very young in this one. I'm not talking about kid young, just, you know, younger than. Uh, um, these are just kind of have a nobody. Uh, but Kid Marshall. Uh, Lisette, Ethany are the two main characters. So in 83, there's a movie called Crawl. And it's about a prince and a fellowship of companions set out to rescue his bride from a fortress of alien invaders who have arrived on their home planet. All these little plot summaries are coming from IMDb. And plus they have other ones. People write in and say, this is also... 
Um, but anyway, its budget was $27 million and it only grossed $17 million. So, just down 10 mil. I'll help it really quick. I just got it right here. I got 10 mil in my pocket. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Right. Anyway, um, so. If it's not fantasy type films, then it's definitely like kid oriented. It's not really like any, like, well, there's like one horror film, I think, on here. That I would say, but it'll still be under, but it's under like sci fi. <laughs> this was, so that was, uh, that was number 10. So that was, you know, the 10 to 15. So here's number nine, and it was an animated film, the only animation I believe on this list. And, um, so, uh, I'm not really gonna look this one up because <laughs> this is, <laughs> the, um, I know there was a, uh, I think a set, I don't know if it was daily, it probably became daily cartoon, uh, maybe a weekend cartoon to begin with, and then it was maybe a daily one, but 1986, Transformers the movie, it's about Transformers, so, I, you know, I'm not going to say what one is about, obviously, there's movies been out, based on the cartoon, and so then they made a movie. They said that, that this movie is actually very good, it's just, you know, it just didn't perform good at the box office, like most of these, and, um, but this one, it came very, very, very close of actually at least, you know, getting to that budget. It was so, like, <clears throat> um, but it has voices that, that, I haven't seen it, but I do want to see this because the voices that actually people who voiced in this movie, Orson Welles, Robert Stack, and Leonard Nimoy, just the name of three. Of course, they're all gone now, but wow. <laughs> so, yeah. But the budget was $6 million for that animated movie, uh, and it made just over $5.8 million. So it came very close of at least making... It's back, it's budget. Just just shy, just a little bit. And I think that's the closest one where it came almost of regaining it. We're almost getting to the point where we're going to get to some that have actually made a profit, but still considered a box office bomb. What makes a box office bomb, y'all? Would it be this? Because, you know, not making enough money at the box office? But see, these were actually good movies. <laughs> ah, number eight, starring David Bowie, Jennifer Connelly. 86, Labyrinth. Ah, 16-year-old <clears throat> Sarah is given 13 hours to solve a labyrinth and rescue her baby brother, Toby. Hmm. When her wish to him to be taken away is granted by the Goblin King Jareth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, its budget was twenty five million. It only grossed thirteen million. But you know what? What some of these movies, uh, not just these in the eighties, but also those in the nineties and and two thousands and maybe now, but um. Especially then, if a movie didn't really perform very well, at, you know, in the theater, it would really become something in during the, you know, the VHS rentals or the DVD rentals. That's where some, some of, a lot of these movies made their money is from the rentals, and that's where it became, you know, it came to life. So some of these are actually cult films. I believe this is considered a cult film. I like Labyrinth. My sister likes <laughs> she likes these type films. This next one though, kind of surprised me. It's on this film, on this film, on this list because it's very good, and uh, I need to see it again. But uh, I, when I saw it the first time, or when I first saw it, I thought it was incredible. Once again, this one came out in 1985. I don't know 
what day, you know, that's all. I, I just didn't look that up. It wasn't too important. Um, so, 1985, <clears throat> stars Rucker Hauer, Michelle Pfeiffer, and Matthew Broderick. Lady Hawk. Lady Hawk, that was, anyway, uh, the thief cast on, isn't he from Beauty and the Beast? He switched movies. Anyway, the thief Gaston escapes the dungeon of medieval Aquila, Aquilia, I, I don't know how to pronounce that. <laughs> anyway, uh, through the latrine, okay, soldiers are about to kill him when Navarre saves him. Navarre traveled with his spirited hawk, plans to kill the bishop of Aquilia with help from Gaston. to the latrine. <laughs> Let's go to the bathroom and we'll just escape it. Anyway, uh, his budget was $20 million. It grossed $18 million. So, if you haven't seen Lady Hawk, Lady Hawk's very good. Sorry for the mispronunciations. If I did any. I tried. Um, this next one, I... This this next one, um, I thought was a big time blockbuster hit, and this is at number six. Uh, it came coming out and coming out came out in nineteen eighty nine, directed by James Cameron. It has Ed Harrison and Michael Biehn, uh, Mary Elizabeth, however you pronounce her last name, Mastry Mastrend. I don't know how to pronounce her name, last name. But Mary Beth, dude, girl, woman. Oh, the main girl in it. Uh, it's the Abyss. This one did make a profit, but just, you know, the studio being a James Cameron film, uh, they expected it to do better than it did. So, okay. I get it. Because, you know, back in the 80s, he was a powerhouse. You know, you had the Terminator... The Abyss, and of course that's before Terminator 2, Judgment Day came, came out, so, especially, uh, she's coming back up on here, my cat, I think she wants to be, she, she's ready for her close-up, um, so, yeah, uh, The Abyss, 1989, it, its budget was 50 million, and it grossed 90 million, so, I think it was the highest grossing movie on this list that actually made, yeah, yeah, by far, it's definitely the highest grossing film um, on this list. So with, uh, with making 90 million on a small budget of 50, the smallest budget movie was Heather's on this list. But yeah, uh, the, so The Abyss, you know, it takes place underwater. To me, I kind of compare it to like aliens, but underwater. It's not, like, in space. But a civilian diving team is enlisted to search for a lost nuclear submarine and faces danger while encountering an alien, alien aquatic species. So it is like alien, it's just underwater. <laughs> Must you get up here? I see you. Anyway. <sighs> You'll do the next video, okay? That's going to be interesting to watch y'all. She does the next one. Yeah. Anyway. This. Number five, I have not seen. And I really don't know if I want to see it. Maybe I might. But i just not too sure. Uh, so. Hmm. Uh. It came out in 1989 again. And this one is, uh, before I even say what the name of it is, uh, an unemployed visionary becomes the manager of a local television station. The station becomes a success. Yay. With all the sorts of hilarious sight gags and wacky humor. Well, yeah. Uh,. <laughs> Starring Weird Al Yankovic, Victoria Jackson, Kevin McCarthy, 
uh, Michael Richards, uh, <laughs> UHF. I remember that movie coming out. I just never saw it. It even that just didn't appeal to me. Of course, you know, when I want to see a movie, like I asked earlier in the film, like what kind of makes you decide to watch to see a film? Well. Most of the time it's who's in it, but also what the story's about, and if it just looks good, <laughs> that's pretty much. Sometimes it's who directed it, sometimes that doesn't matter, but, you know, usually it's about who's in it and what what's it's about, what the movie is about. Okay, so this one did make a profit, barely. Its, it's budget was $5 million. It grossed $6 million, so it made a little bit. It made its money back plus a little extra. But still, um, depending on when it came out, since I have it on, see, any of this you can find on, you know, uh, let's see here, uh, release date, it was a summer movie, so it came out on July 21st, 1989, so whatever other July movies that came out in 89, uh, I believe this one came out after, Batman, so the Michael Keaton Batman, so I'm sure Batman was still out in the theaters then, but most people have already probably have already seen it by then. Anyway, the next one. See, we have some big time directors here that's on the list. Well, I think they're big time directors. They're named. <laughs> if I can name the director, then I think they're like they're considered big time to me. Um, but there's back-to-back. -back. He, he has third and fourth right here. Uh, so. <clears throat> and, and that same star in it, too. <laughs> oh, okay. So, in 1986, a, uh, a movie came out. <laughs> here we go. Uh, let's see here. A rough and tumble trucker. And his sidekick face off with an ancient sorcerer in a super supernatural battle beneath Chinatown. John Carpenter's Big Trouble in Little China starring Kurt Russell, Michelle Pfeiffer. No, not Michelle Pfeiffer. Kim Cattrall. Kim Cattrall. Um, and also Dennis Dunn, who's... No, no, no. And then James Hong. <laughs> Anyway, uh, yeah, Kurt Russell, Kim Cattrall, ex name Michelle. Um, yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> its budget was twenty five million. It grossed eleven million. So, <clears throat> uh, actually, you know, I'm a John Carpenter fan, so I own that film. <laughs> And I also love Kurt Russell. So I own the film. And number three is also another John Carpenter film. And uh, it's, it was actually a remake. Okay, fine. Here we go. It's a remake. Okay. Uh, a research team in Antarctica is... Hunted by a shape-shifting alien that assumes the appearance of its victims. It's the thing. Kurt Russell. <laughs> Wilford Brimley. Uh, Keith David, to just to name a few who's in the film. Um, for some reason, I really like the thing. And the ending is just like the best ending ever, I think. Because you have two surviving... And one is the thing. Which one is the thing? Well, I know which one is the thing. But do you know who the thing is between the final two, the last two standing? It's budget. Um, you know, it, it did make a gross. It did gross. Uh, his gross was higher than... It did make a profit. That's what I'm trying to say. Budget was $15 million and it grossed $19.5 million. So it did make some money back, but it's still considered a box office flop. But it's a very good film. And a lot of people think the newer, the thing that came out. Uh, oh, hush. 
Hmm. Several years ago. Anyway, the one that... The thing that came out several years ago, people think that is a, a sequel. It is not a sequel. It's not a remake. It is a prequel. You watch that one, and then you watch the 1982 one. And I think the makers of that the thing did a very good job. They did their homework, especially, you know, on how to end it. Because in The Thing, in the 82 Kurt Russell one, when they go to the Norwegian camp which is, you know, what the one that came out several years ago is the camp. That's that camp that they were at. <laughs> they, they find the, the block of, uh, you know, McCready and the doc, I think. He, uh, maybe he's not the doc. But anyway, another guy. Uh, he, uh, you know, they go over to the Norwegian camp. They, they... You got to pay attention. You know, there's an axe in a wall that was left there by the Norwegians in that film. And they, they made sure that was there to make it match the 82 film. So some of the some of that camp, when they went to that camp, they kind of made it, even though in the 82 film, it's that, that scene, that part isn't very long, but they studied the, those, that 10 minute or five, 10 minute, you know, scenes that that took place at that camp, and then, you know, it turned into another movie, but, you know, they, they ended it in major detail to match the 82 film, so they did their homework. So, you have to, you need to watch that one, and then you watch the, the 82 one, because, you know, the one that came out a few years ago, um, it, uh, I mean, it ends the with the music of eighty of the nineteen eighty two the thing in the beginning. Plus, you know, I like the music of the thing as well. You know, it's just all of a sudden you just hear the I don't know. It's like heartbeats, boom boom. <laughs> I don't know. It's just uh anyway. Ah, there you go. 2011. So, so, you know, you watch that one, and then you watch 82 one. It's not a remake. It's not a sequel. It's a prequel. So, there. Nineteen eighty two at number two is a Ridley Scott film. In nineteen eighty two starring Harrison Ford, Sean Young, Daryl Hannah, Rutger Hauer, I believe, is in it as well. Yep. He's in two in these this list. Um A Blade Runner must pursue and terminate four replicants who stole a ship in space. And have returned to Earth to find their creator. This is Blade Runner. Um, and I even saw the newer one. You know, I liked it. You know, with Ryan Gosling and, and Harrison Ford. Uh, you know, came back to do his role. So, um, I liked it. I guess some people didn't. I don't think that one was a major box office flop. But, mm. uh, this one did make a profit. You know, uh, its budget was thirty million. It grossed forty one, and the thing is, I've always heard that Blade Runner was the one, if not the best, science fiction movie ever made, and yet they consider it a box office bomb of the eighties. <laughs> right there, I'm like, <laughs> scratch your head, you know. And at number one, have not seen it, but it is a superhero film. <sighs> um, <laughs> Starring Sam J. Jones and Max von Sydow, you know, from The Exorcist. Uh, a football player and his friends travel to the planet Mongo. 
and find themselves fighting the tyranny of being the merciless to save Earth. Flash Gordon. 1980s Flash Gordon. Um, budget was $20 million. It grossed $27 million. So, you know, it did make money. It did make a little bit of profit. And um, they say, you know, the soundtrack, if you are a Queen fan, then you will love the soundtrack because it's... It has, I don't, I guess it has nothing but Queen music in it, so, but I've never seen Flash Gordon, <laughs> but, uh, it's, it has nothing but good things to say about it, so I just have to give some of these movies a try on ones that I have not seen, so, Those are the 15 1980s like box office bombs, but the movies were actually great. See, these movies are good. Big Trouble Little China, a little bit on the cheesy side, but I have another Kurt Russell movie that is even cheesier, and that's Tango and Cash, which is equally as good. <laughs> um, so... Do you agree what's on this list? I mean, I mean, you can't really dispute the numbers here, budget versus grossing. But uh, do, do you do you agree that they were box office bombs? Do you think they deserve to be considered a box office bomb? You know, uh, uh. <laughs> uh as I yeah, these are these are good. These some of these are really good films, as as I said. So, thanks for watching. And uh, video is a little late this week. Sorry, but I'll be better. Uh, but thank you for watching, and I will see you next week. And maybe see now they settle down when I'm at the end of the video. In the middle, they're right there in my face, shaking the camera. Cats. Anyway, I'm going to leave this empty theater and go somewhere where it's not so, you know, lonely. Bye.